Hey, what's going on? YST here and welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. Now today I'm not by myself, I am joined by none other than the man, the myth, the legend, Scratch. How is it going bro? Yo, what's up YST? How are you doing buddy? Doing pretty pretty good man, excited to be here. Finally, it's been a while since uh, we, we're supposed to do this a while ago, let me just put it like that, you know? Yeah, for sure. But yeah, just before we get into the video, do you just want to break down what you do on your channel, your kind of content style and what you do for your viewers over there? Yeah, of course, man. So what am I doing? I'm doing a tons of end game content. Of course, we do have the mid game early content, not as much as the end game. Crazy builds, crazy teams, arena, clan boss, whatever you need, you'll find it there, you know? Yeah, wicked. Yeah, but I'm a big fan of your channel anyway. I've been watching you for ages. But yeah, straight after this video, head over to his channel because we are doing a part two as well to, for this video. And also drop him a subscription and all of that good stuff. And it will be in the pinned comment and in the description. So today, basically, we're going to be talking about champions that are in a dire need of a buff. Now, I know that we get buffs occasionally, but these dudes we're mentioning still need a lot of love. So because we've got a scratch on the channel, how about you kick things off today? Do you want to start off with your first one? Yeah, that's fine, man. So we basically have tons of champions getting reworked once a year and stuff. So it's definitely not enough. Platinum needs to step their game up on that uh, situation. But I'm going to start with one that's a new addition to the game, right? So I'm going to go straight at the Shadow King. Okay. If, if you're going to look at Jingwon, he's actually such an amazing champion, right? Look-wise. But <laughs> yeah. his kit is so bad, man. And they could have made him okay, like... I would definitely change the passive just to at least give him a role in the game. So if I would make that passive to work for the entire team, it would be a great counter in arena for like a Kaimar or something like that, you know? So that's going to make him special and he's going to be a void legendary. So people will be like, okay, I can actually use that champion. And while you're doing that, you're going to be like, well, I need this champion to do a bit more. So probably I would make from him the legendary Magnar, you know, attacks all enemies two times, lands this, lands that, but give him some damage. So then my team, for example, in Arena, might have a bit of a a bit of a winning rate to say like this, you know? So I feel like if they yeah. would change a couple of things on him like that, simple things, they're not like something that's completely going to break the game. It's not going to make the champion OP, clan boss, Hydra, Arena, and everything else, but he's going to have that special place in the game, you know? Considering that he's a Void Legendary, he looks so badass. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I was actually unhappy to actually pull this champion and you should never feel like that if you're pulling a void legendary and i've built him in full damage i've built him in like full perception high accuracy and i just can't find a place where this dude shines but yeah, as you're saying like a, a damage multiplier increase on his a3 pretty much could be like one of the main things to change in this dude but even that passive just a bit of a tweak and he has the kind of base to be amazing but he's just complete garbage. So, Polarium, please sort it out and fix up my boy Jing One here. All right, so I'm just going to head into my first one as well. And considering yeah. we just had the St. Patrick's Day, we're going to go into Killian the Lucky. Yeah, so with Killian the Lucky, like, I built this dude and I was just really underwhelmed with his entire kit. He just needs, like, that extra boost, right? So on the A1, mm. he's got a, attacks one enemy, places decreased speed, and a chance of, like, doing the turn meter stuff. Now, just do the turn meter thing. He's a legendary champion. Heading into their A2, once again, attacks one enemy, can place a block active skills for four turns. And then there's also that kind of chance thing again. Now, I think the only way to change this champion is just stop removing those chances and just let him do those abilities, right? Also, one mm -hmm. is A3, attacks one enemy, and it's that same kind of thing. He can stun one target. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think about Killian? I think he needs to have some AOE stuff in his kit, man. Like, honestly, I got this champion day, day one with the fusion. I never use him. I don't I don't think I have one at 60. If I have him, I just made him for some champion training event. But honestly, I never use the champion because he's so rubbish, you know? Like, a lot of people would come and say, well, he actually helped me in Faction Wars so much. But there's so many other champions that can help you in Faction Wars instead of a legendary champion that don't require the legendary skill tomes, you know? That yeah. They actually have some utility out of... Uh, that area only so i would probably try to make the a2 aoe then he will be like yeah he will help you in faction wars because he's gonna lock a hundred percent your the entire uh, the entire wave you know and then make him a uh, an aoe on the a3 as well and maybe not uh, don't give him a hundred percent chance even though we actually have quite a few with a hundred percent chance 
uh, to stun now give him a 75 percent chance aoe to stun on the a3 100 percent to lock on the a2 and then you've made the champion that might be useful in some content doom tower faction wars yeah. even though not great for arena or a uh, clan boss necessary you know yeah, I think you're right. Just bringing in that AOE aspect instead of that single target and like a RNG aspect for the other stuff. I think just that alone will definitely change this champ. 100%. All yeah, right. Do you wanna... I, I feel like it, yeah. Do you so I'm going to go. One? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stick here. I'm going to stick here on this faction, actually, and I'm going to go at Baron. Now, I know a lot of people that might use Baron for fun in the Doom Tower, just on the waves to get the cheesy strat with zero turns and him counter attacking and the surplus damage doesn't really do anything out of there you know so i talked about baron for a very long time now that he kind of needs a buff he's just power creep the mera left him behind like he's just forgotten you know it's yeah. the secret skill is fine once that secret skill activates he actually deal, deals tons of damage you know but it's nothing to protect him once you unlock that skill so i actually gotta take a turn i'm unlocking that and i gotta wait for another turn but i have nothing that protects my champion to ensure that he's gonna survive the next turn to actually use that secret skill, you know? So I would yeah. probably try to either go on that way, uh, place an unkillable on him or a block damage when that happens or make, give him a veil so nobody can target him. At least like this, you're gonna counter him with AoE just as an idea. And the main thing that I would really like to see, if you pay attention to his A2, that decreased defense, okay? Yeah goes through immunity goes through everything you know so basically it's kind of like a mini ghostborn since ghostborn is so unique and he's such in the mera for the current uh, stages in the dungeons i would like to see this aoe land that defense down unresistable aoe so like this i have a void champion that i can run in every single dungeon on stage 25 without getting resisted on defense down what i needed you know at least at least one or the other you know something needs to change a bit on him honestly yeah i totally agree like I'm actually like a sly fan of Baron, not because he's amazing. It's just like my youngest daughter clicked a random void shard and he just popped out. And I was like, <laughs> since then, I've just liked this dude. But yeah, once the sky piercer actually procs, it's great, right? But there's mm. nothing after that that's kind of amazing unless they make that A2 or AoE, like you said. But yeah, it does it does smack really hard. And fun fact, I don't have a seer, right? After like two and a half years. Mm. And the way well, that I beat the first two, the two Doom Tower rotations was just RNGing with that secret skill with a defensive comp, which was pretty funny. But yeah, Baron's in a die need of a buff, for sure. Absolutely, man. All right, so next up, I'm going to head into a champion that I actually hate. And I think he's my most hated champion in Raid, and he's in the Dark Elves. Hmm? And he goes by the name of Warden. Now, this dude is just complete trash. And the main reason why I put him on this list is he's been in this game forever, right? And there's just nothing in his kit to write home about. So, he attacks one enemy, there's a chance of placing a weaken, right? A2, attacks all enemies, can place a decrease attack. But look at the chances. This is where I've got the issue with him. 25%. And then the, 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 sm the, small the small version, version yeah. as well, yeah. And then he's got the small version of the increased defense as well. And it's like, why is this even a thing for an epic champion at the, in this kind of realm of the game? Like, make this a 50%. And make it a 60% on the increased defense. And then mm. attacks all enemies, places reflect damage. It doesn't even hit art at all. So to me, this dude is just completely useless. Have you ever played with yeah. this guy? Man, this is... I, I played ages ago. This is kind of like one of the OG champions in the game. So the main thing that you're going to see on a champion that's like OG. If, if anyone has this damage based on attack, defense, blah, blah, blah for an epic champion and stuff is an OG champion that's been here since the vanilla, you know, and yeah. he's useless because he got power creep like to the next level. And yeah, I, I I wouldn't mind that A3 the way it is. Just leave the damage based on defense. Maybe let him deal a bit of damage, not yeah. something crazy, but just make the decrease attack, increase defense, the higher version and make it 100% chance, you know, on that skill. This is on a four turn cooldown as well. So either you're going to decrease that on a three turn cooldown just to make him a bit more viable so people that actually use him because we have like what well, we have champions like uh stag knight uh, or uh the other one from the orcs i actually just forgot his name right now that uh decreases attack aoe on a three turn cooldown and defense down so this one doesn't even have that defense down just uh increased defense so i feel like on a three turn cooldown he should be more than fine and would be good for clan boss you know 
Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, even for faction wars, just having just like a filler champion with an increased defense and a high version of decreased attack, it make it really viable, right? For those champions that's hitting mm. pretty hard on the waves. So yeah, absolutely. That was my second pick. Who have you got next? So I'm I'm gonna go to another legendary actually, and uh, I have like five or six of him. Ronas from the High Elves. Yep. Basilius Ronas. So he actually got a buff recently, but I'm still not feeling. It. I don't think like he's enough just to give him that 100% chance stun instead of the 75% that he had before on the A3 and call it like, that's it, guys. We fixed the champion. He's still on a 4 turn cooldown. The damage on this champion is still not much better overall. It's not feeling like, wow, it increased. And the A1 doesn't really do that much either, you know? So I, I would try to change something around completely on him, you know? Like, yeah, the stun is the only good thing that he does on the kit, you know? So that could be arguable that yeah it's good for her uh, good for faction horse he's gonna help us with that skill but the a1 the a2 they just don't do that much overall you know like more damage needed probably and uh just maybe rework the entire kit a bit in a way or another you know to make him more uh more useful yeah i guess what even making that a2 like even if they just remove the remove three times and just do attacks all enemies two times or something like that with like an aoe i think having I don't know how hard does his A3 hit. I'm not too familiar with this. Man, he doesn't hit that hard, honestly. Like, yeah, I, I can't. Even, I don't even know with what champion to compare him. Kind of like Grohag the Blood, I would say. He doesn't <laughs> hit hard at all. You know, like it doesn't yeah. feel like wow. Yeah, that's an interesting one. He looks pretty cool though. He looks like Legolas from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Huh? that yeah. That's kind of like the thing with the with the champions, man. They make them uh, uh, to look so cool, but that's about it, you know. Yeah. All right, I'll lead into my next one. It's actually also a legendary champion. And it is in, I believe it's the Dark Hills. I'm so bad with these factions. Where's Normandy Returned? <laughs> Night Revenant. Night Revenant. She should be an undead though. She looks scary as heck. But yeah, aesthetically, this champion looks absolutely amazing, right? And when I first pulled her, I was like, this is crazy. And when I was using her, I was just so underwhelmed with her being a legendary champion. And it's all down to, okay, she's got an amazing A3, right? But mm. there's champions like Frozen Banshee, who's a rare, who over the turn count will actually deal more than what she's providing because it's on a four turn cooldown. And that's where my issue lies. If this poison sensitivity and this poisons was on a, a two or a three turn cooldown, I think this would be a lot more viable in my opinion. But four turns is just nothing to write home about from, in my opinion. Also on the mm. A2, Attacks one enemy, 100% chance once booked or placing decreased attack. And, you know, there's many champions in the game that can do this. Also a kind of good heal as well. But that's also on a free turn cooldown. And then the A1 is where I've got the most issue. Attacks one enemy and it's only a single hit. That's where my issue lies. And has a 40% chance of increasing the duration of three random debuffs. Now, when you think about champions like Vizier, who also has decreased attack, and he can extend all of the buffs with three times hitter. I don't know. She just fills into that okay category for me. I don't think there's any... Like, would you book this champion personally? Man, no. I actually have her. I don't use her. The thing with her is how you said it. The A1 should be... Even if it attacks one enemy, should be like a 60 or 70% chance to increase the duration of all debuffs on the yeah. target, you know? And having the attack down on 3-turn cooldown, I like that because it's for the three uh, for 3 turns on the A2. But what I would do, the A3, I would knock that down to 3-turn cooldown, have yeah. the A1 uh, to increase the duration of all debuffs, but to be like a higher chance, like so like something 75% chance upwards. To ensure that time to time is actually happening because it's only a single hitter you know and that would actually make her pretty pretty decent yeah if, uh, you're you're gonna put her next to vizier for example you know yeah i think because it's only extending three random debuffs right like let's just say mm. the a2 you get resisted from that three percent chance which does happen that can end your run pretty quickly if that's your only decreased attack champion in your comp but if she starts to increase all of the debuffs that's where it's able to kind of keep her up a little bit more consistent and as you said taking that A3 down to a free turn cooldown, or maybe even just on the A1, making it hit two times as well could make a big drastic change. So yeah, just a few small tweaks, and I think we might see Nama returning a little bit, which would be pretty Yeah, cool. maybe. <laughs> returning yeah. from X-Man. She looks like an X-Man character. I don't know. She always reminds me of somebody from there for some reason. Yeah. 
All right, here you go next for us. So I'm going to go with an epic. And it seems like the Banner Lords are on me today. They want me. They want my blood. Azure from the uh, Banner Lords. Yeah. So on the A1, attacks one enemy two times and a small chance to uh, land the stun. The A1 is not that bad, honestly. The chance increases to 100 if the target has an increased speed buff, which is not really making that much sense. But then we have the A2, and that's on a fourth and cooldown, the ally protection and the shield buff on this champion. Now, I would change something here as well. I don't know. I feel like, yeah, yeah. either put this on a three turn cooldown just to kind of like come and play with the rest of the champions. We can use him in clan boss, for example, but definitely needs a bit of a change on this. Fourth and cooldown is so long, man. Like all the champions used to have these crazy long cooldowns before and the weird yeah. skills because we didn't really need them. We didn't have that much content in the game to, to deal with. We only had clan boss, we had the dungeons, and that's it. That, that was kind of like the vanilla vanilla raid, you know? And the, the last skill is on a fourth and cooldown, attacks one enemy, places an extra hit if the target has a stun, you know? And steals the termiter. The extra hit is always critical. So again, it doesn't really make that much sense. Like I gotta open with the A1 and pray that that 30% uh, chance is actually happening and yeah. then I can use my A3 finally, you know? So I <laughs> I feel like they gotta they gotta change it. Maybe make this A3 to land that stun 100% or make him AOE decrease speed. So then it actually comes in play. AOE decrease speed on the A3 on the three turn cooldown ally protection. And then with the A1, it makes sense that I land the stun and I can actually do it 100% chance if the enemy has increased speed which is fine it's kind of like it's a, i went with decreased speed on the a3 but whatever it makes a bit of more sense to have something related to it you know yeah for sure like this dude i don't know if you can relate to this but every single time mm. i'm pulling void shards this dude pops out and i always use him as food and i should never have to feel like that with a void epic and as you were saying make that cooldown a three turn and even do you know where he places that shield there's mm. champions like Tarogi the Frog that puts it on all allies as well. And this is a void. So for me personally, if you could put a shield on all of your allies with an ally protection, I think you might start seeing him in some mid-game clan boss teams as well. So yeah, yeah many probably, things yeah. actually be changed. Yeah, for sure. 100%. All right, so no. uh, next up, I believe he's in the sacred order. People are going to bash me from not knowing my factions. There he is. I got it right. So it's going to be Holstering. Now, this dude is pretty recent, and he looks like Assassin's Creed, right? He looks mm. insane. But there's just too much RNG in this kit, and I'm not a fan of it. So, attacks two times at random, places the increased attack buff on this champion for two turns, if it's critical. Like, okay, it's alright. But heading into that A2. Now, he attacks three times at random, which I just don't like anyway. I'm not sure how you feel about random skills. I I don't like that either, honestly. Yeah. yeah, and he will ignore 25% of the defense against targets under Hex. So that's something else you need to bring in. And it will ignore a further 25% of defense to targets under Hex from these specific factions. Now, this specific faction things, I just want to stop it. I don't like it. It's fun sometimes, but there's just... How often are you fighting people against these factions, right? Then on that A3, another random hitter attacks four times at random. Each hit has a 75% chance of placing that Hex for three turns and champions from these factions cannot resist it. And then each hit has a 75% chance of stealing uh, of the target's turn meter and steals 50% if they're under those factions. Now, all I would do to this dude, just remove that kind of random hits, just make them AoEs. So you can land that consistent Hex and then land those consistent ignore defenses. And just that alone will make him a pretty viable champion, in my opinion. Have so you had much playing test with this dude? Go on, sorry. Um, have you played with this guy at all? I actually try him on the test server and stuff. So yeah. the main thing with him, he, he actually doesn't have bad multipliers, you know. Yeah. But how he specified attacks at randoms, uh, attacks at random is never good because you cannot target a specific, uh, a specific enemy. So I, even if you don't make him AoE, you know, just make that attacks three times one enemy attacks four times one enemy attacks two times one enemy and then you know that you're targeting a specific uh, a specific champion and if you're really worried so much about hacks because hacks sucks in this game so bad like they don't really we don't really use it right yeah so maybe pair him with another champion that brings you hacks around if you really want him to 
to do that extra stuff with the with the hex but even like that it's still just not a good champion because of the hex man so hex is just bad overall so my opinion is that the only good hex champion is a uh, rural and mitrala that's it yeah you know are you not a fan of the fear the two major ones since the buff and stuff i'm still not using her she can't really do nothing for yeah. me you know i fight her in arena not the right affinity tried her against the seer not matching even with the craziest stats I could, I could I I could give her, you know. So I feel like is she's not a champion that will change the the game. Yeah. I cannot run her in speed run uh, or dungeons, you know, or anything like that because she just doesn't have the firepower. Even though she should, because that will be a good alternative for people that don't have Seer, and everyone is gonna get that champion from the Doom Tower, and that will kind of change change things a bit. But hopefully, they might consider in bringing her more damage against waves just pv so they don't make her busted in pvp for example maybe who knows yeah for sure you know but for now poor host ring maybe one day you can attack all enemies <laughs> all right did i need to <laughs> yeah. get to the next one yeah horse ring they're random so i'm actually gonna go all the way <laughs> to the night revenants and we're gonna right. talk about the pitiless one that's an epic champion i actually feel him ages ago for faction was thinking that he's gonna he's gonna help me you know so attacks one enemy two times Fills the, uh, the champion's thermometer by 5%, which is kind of like meh. And then you have attacks all enemies. Each critical hit boosts this champion's thermometer by 15%. The passive just gives him a bit of a a bit of a heal, you know. And the aura increases crit rate in all battles. I like the aura because it's for um, all battles. But I feel like the A1 and the A2, they're just not not doing enough. Like just as a champion, he's not doing enough. He's not doing enough damage to be water to be built like so maybe i would bring some ignore defense in his kit like that we can actually use him as a damage dealer you know so people yeah. will be like oh you have a new spitless one yet he hits so damn hard you know so <laughs> maybe if they would bring like ignore ignores 50 percent defense on the a2 that would be something uh something good or ignore some buffs not as good as ignore defense but still something to to give him a yeah, special I think, taste, you know. I think for me personally, like his champion is like you get excited as you're reading it. So you're filling the term meters, he's filling the term meters again, and then it's like that's it. Like he doesn't lead into anything, right? Like there's no mm. debuffs or anything. It's just yeah, he's just filling his own term meters, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, he definitely needs some sort of buff of this damage or a debuff or something. Or well, as you said, ignoring defense for sure. All right. Yeah. Uh, next one is a champion that people were saying was going to be a popper carry version 2 so chancellor yasmin now when she first came out i thought she was going to be pretty amazing right so places mm -hmm. an extra hit if the target has no active buffs like is this really ever going to happen like there's always champions of buffs right and then heals an ally by 40 percent of their max hp and heals by 60 percent if the target has 50 percent or hp less now i don't have an issue with this on a two turn cooldown that's really effective right Mm. But then the A3 has a 50% chance of removing all all buffs from all enemies, then places a sleep debuff for one turn on all enemies who have active buffs. Now, this doesn't make any sense to me. Like, you're removing all buffs on a 75% chance, and then places a sleep on people that don't have buffs. Now, for me personally, I would just make this a full out strip, and that's it, in my opinion. Would you change this at all, personally? Or is it just me? Yeah, I mean... I definitely feel like we need more uh, more strippers in the game and guys do not think at naughty stuff yeah buff strippers that's what <laughs> i mean with it so we do need more in the game because we don't have enough and that kind of makes it a bit scarce but yeah the main thing with that sleep is like if they have a buff that you cannot remove for example or if you're getting resisted you might be landing the sleep after but just just having that 75 percent chance yeah it's not good enough why not make it 100 percent chance is on a four turn cooldown you don't have defense down you don't have attack down on this kid so she could actually be useful somewhere, you know? Even for faction yeah. wars, if the waves, you're finding waves with man eaters and all these where they're buffing each other and they have unkillable and you don't have a different champions. Maybe you don't have Setalia from this faction to strip the buffs from the enemy. She come, can uh, come in play and actually do something useful for the team except that healing on the on the A2, you know? Yeah, even if they wanted to, like, by some chance, not change this ability for some reason, Maybe you just add like an increased speed in there as well or increased turn meter to make her a bit viable because when I'm reading her, she is pretty much like an apothecary with that heal and stuff, apart from the strip. 
And she's got a nice aura of increased speed for like mid game players who don't have their arbiters yet. And that's pretty substantial compared to like 17% and stuff like that. So I think mm. an increased speed and turn meter or just make this a full out 100% chance to strip all of the buffs. And then you'll be, she'll be a pretty used champion to be fair. Yeah, definitely. I feel like if, if she has a 100% chance to strip buffs, man, she's going to be amazing. You know, a lot of people will use her. Yeah. All right, guys. So that was our list for today. Um, I hope you half enjoyed talking about these champions that need buffs with us today. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So hopefully somewhere near in the future, once all the problems uh, that they currently have, they get sorted, hopefully. And uh, then they will have some time to organize uh, some of these champions as well. Seems like they're getting back on track. So that's very good to, to actually see, you know. Yeah. Um, so before we wrap up here, I was just going to ask you, is there any champion that you are going for over the 2x Ancients? Because I know your champ your account is stacked. Is there anyone you got in mind that we can look out for? Yeah, I mean, I, I would I would gladly take another Rotos, another Tranda, another Kaimar, Duchess. Okay. You know, kind of like Mera champions. That's about it. Not looking for anything particular that I don't have from the the non void champions. You know, wicked. I look forward I to so. it. But yeah, <laughs> I'm straight so. after this. But straight after this video, guys, there's gonna be an end card as well, and it's gonna lead you into Scratch's channel. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button on his channel, and also check out part two where we're gonna be talking about epics that's almost or better than legendary champions so look out for it and i'll catch you on the next one peace